Welcome. The following video or audio are the study of the Bible, chapter by chapter, verse by verse of the King James 1611 Bible. Our family welcomes you to our household Bible ministry time. You may watch and listen with us. Our goal has been from Genesis to the book of Revelation. Each chapter by chapter we try. And topical preaching and teaching aids you can find by searching different topics. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. Come and appreciate the word of God for our spiritual growth, our development in the word of God by these lessons. Please feel, feel, please feel welcome to upload and share our Bible study with family and friends. Like us, subscribe, write a comment, let us know you heard the message. The video or audio are not copyrighted and should be used and not abused. Thank you. Colossians chapter number 3. If ye then be risen with Christ, resurrection, come out of the baptism, new creature, you're born again, seek those things that which are above. We have no goals of earthly or worldly pleasures. We're not to seek that of the world. We're not to seek that which is the which is this earth. Jesus says, uh, seek ye treasures in heaven. But where your heart is, there there will your treasures be. It's above all. It's not earthly. It's not worldly. If you've been risen with Christ. Where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God, and that tells you right there. Heavenly. Hebrews 8 1 and Hebrews 4 14. It's a new birth. It set our new goals, our new life, our goals. Heavenly afflictions. Heavenly goals. Heavenly treasures. Set your afflictions on things above, not on things on the earth. Again, twice. Verily, verily. Is it so hard to understand? We're told by Paul through the, the Holy Spirit of the Scriptures. Where to seek that which is in heaven. But many don't follow. If ye are dead. Which means. You're dead to this world. You're dead to the earth. You have not the world's objectives on mine. So if you be dead. Baptism. Remember he puts you under the water. And your life is hid with Christ in God. So this earth, this world is to have nothing to do with us. And we're to have nothing to do with them. We are to be hid in Christ, Jesus Christ, in God. That means that's, that's where our occupation. We read in, uh, I think it's Ephesians, that we are seated in heavenly places. This is not our home. We're wanderers. We're pilgrims. When Christ, who is our life, see, life, eternal life, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Life is in Christ, shall appear. Then shall ye also appear with him in glory. So, there's coming a day we will be with Christ forever. We'll be with him at the rapture, and we'll be with him at the second advent. Mortify, that goes back, verse 3, for ye are dead. Mortify means dead, mortician. Mortify, therefore your members. Which are upon the earth. Alright, you that are here, your flesh, kill it. And I don't mean a physical killing. I mean kill it so it doesn't sin. That's what we're going to see right now. Kill your members that are on the earth of fornication. Don't sin. Uncleanness. Inordinate affection. Well, that's today. Men loving men and girls loving girls. Evil complacence. That's, uh... To injure without cause. And covetousness, 
which is idolatry. So idolatry is coveting and coveting is idolatry. And we are not to do that if we're dead in Christ. We're to take this flesh and we're to bury it in the ground as we did when we were baptized. Problem is, this corpse keeps coming up. Thank God we got 1 John 1, 9. So when it does sin, but we're not to sin. For which things... For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. Those are sins. He that has the Son has everlasting life. He that has not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him, because they're still in their sins. Now what we'll get if we are caught with these sins, or any sins, and if it's unconfession, not clean, it will be wood, hay, or stubble. And as a result from the fire, we'll still be saved, but as a result from the fire, it will be ashes. And then a loss for reward. In that which ye also walked sometime, when ye lived in them. That was when you were lost. That's before you came to Christ. You walked in those sins, don't walk in them no more. You are the new man. But now, now, right now, you're saved. You've been baptized. You're saved. Ye also put off all these, the sins, and anger, that's a sin. But then again, scripture with scripture, the Bible says, be ye angry and sin not. You can be angry, but don't go to the point where you're going to sin. Moses sinned by his, you realize all that Moses did, and the reason why he did not to go in that promised land, because his anger disobeyed God. God said, speak to the rock. Man, he walked up to that thing. He, he gave Israel the riot right. And then smoked that rock. And God said, you're not going in. You can be angry. Man, he was angry with Israel. God was with, angry with Israel. Moses would calm God down. And God would calm Moses down. But Moses never sinned those earlier times. God's like, just calm down. They're your people. I know they're stiff hearted. I know who they are. I love you. There's a promise. But then again, when he got angry and disobeyed the word of God, that's the sin. Wrath. Not to have wrath. That's anger with complete action. Wrath. The wrath of God is hell. God is angry with sinners. God is angry with sins. Psalm 7:11, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth ought not to be named among Christians. Lie not one to another, telling lies, white lies, yellow lies, polka dotted lies, Santa Claus, Easter Bunny. And there are churches that have that. There are Christians who lie to each other. I've had Christian businessmen lie to me. Seeing that ye have put on, excuse me, put off the old man. There's that old man. We are new creatures. We are a new man in Christ. We were born of a woman, the old birth. We are born again of the spirit. That's the new birth. A new beginning. Can you get a new release on life? Yes. By the new birth. Put off the old man with his deeds. What's the deeds? All these sins we've been talking about. And have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the things of him, Jesus, that created him. So God created us and God's given us new life through the new birth. When there is neither Greek nor Jew, no classification of nations. Circumcision nor uncircumcision. There's no law. There's no unlaw. Barbarian. That's a complete, you know, brute. Scythian, bond, nor free. Whether you're, you're in chains or you're not in chains. Whether you are owning slaves or you're a slave. But Christ is all and in all. So everything's Jesus Christ. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God. And the elect of God are those that are saved. Lord, I want to be chosen by you. And God says, okay, my son, here's the sacrament. Lord, I choose that. That's what I want for my salvation. God says, okay, you're elected. 
None of this Calvinism or anything like that. The election comes by you choosing Jesus Christ and then God choosing you because you chose Jesus Christ. Holy and beloved, bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering. Forbearing one another and forgiving one another. So, holiness, beloved, bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. That's not talking about God. That's talking about us, the new creature. That is who we're supposed to come. We're supposed to put off anger and malice and put on forgiveness. And as I talked about another night with the... The chapter we're talking about when you want to give up a bad habit when you want to give up a sin you can't give up that that sin or that bad habit and boom now you got a hole in order to get rid of a bad habit or a sin you've got to fill it with something good so you take the sins of earlier chapter 3 what we've already read and you fill it with something good verses 12 or 13 and that's how you succeed and doing right get rid of the old man and fill the old man with the new man you can't say to the old man all right get out of here and it is, there's a void there's vainness it's got to be filled jesus said of an evil spirit that left the man he went out and the man had reformed he, he cleaned up his heart but he didn't fill his heart and that evil spirit came back he came back with other evil spirits and the man became worse. What that guy should have done was clean his heart with Jesus Christ. And that would be above all, of all, and everything. Over every evil spirit. And he would have won. But no. So forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye so get rid of this anger and wrath that we are read about when it comes to forgiveness somebody asks hey listen forgive me peter says how often am i supposed to forgive him jesus gave an, an unlimited number each and every time this guy has asked me to forgive me 400 times well you forgive him the 400 first 400 second 400 so on that's what the new man is and above all, these things put on charity, love in action, action in love, which is the bound of perfectness. So we're not just talking about love, we're talking about charity. That completes you. That makes you perfect. Let the peace of God, now these are the fruit of the Spirit. Let the peace of God rule in your hearts. So what is your heart to be ruled by? What is it to be organized? The peace of God. And if the peace of God is in your heart, then your heart can make clear decisions. It can do what needs to be done. To the which also ye are called in one body, unity, and be ye thankful. Again, Paul writes down, prison epistle, be thankful. Let the word of Christ, the word of God, wait a minute, the word of Christ, the word of God, there it is, dwell in you richly in all wisdom. Oh, I never read my Bible. Oh, I just read Psalms. I just read the Proverbs. Oh, I just open up my Bible and read a chapter or two. It says the word of Christ. The Bible says the word of God. Richly in all wisdom. You want to be wise? It comes by the word of God. It comes by the word of Christ. And there are some Bibles that will tell you what the word of Christ is. They mark it in red to help you even more. That's a help aid. Dwell in you richly in all wisdom. So you can be rich with wisdom by the word of Christ. Teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Singing with grace in the hearts to the Lord. Acts 16. They're in jail. Paul and Silas are singing at midnight, and God did a work that a man and his family, the jailer, got saved. A remarkable verse that we use, 1631, to try to bring people to Jesus Christ. 
And I'm telling you right now, Psalms, that's in your Bible. Psalms is your songbook. There are hymns and there are spiritual songs. They're not just crap today being played out. Not just modern music. You make one sentence and you sing it 32,000 times. You take two words and it's sung 18 times. Oh, yeah, this is a hymn. No. Makes God sick. A lot of the scene in church age. And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. That keep you from sinning. I'm gonna have this out, I'm gonna have this alcohol in the name of Jesus Christ. Eventually that will not work. Either Jesus Christ will get the victory or you will turn to the sin. And if you're going to have a beer in the name of Jesus Christ and you are truly saved and doing right and the Holy Spirit that dwells in you, Christ dwells in you, you will, if you get in the word of God, you will realize, you know what? I'm not supposed to be drinking beer. That's wrong. So you want to sin? You really want, hey, God, you know, I can do what I want to do. Do it in the name of Jesus Christ and see how long it lasts. See which goes first, the sin or Jesus. If the sin lasts, then it's wrong. If Jesus Christ lasts, then it's forever good. Do all for the name of Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. 1 Corinthians 10.31 Again, giving thanks. The guy's in jail. He's been beaten. He's been abused. He's been swindled. He's been robbed. He's been shipwrecked. He's had churches go against him. He's had churches fail. He's had Christians go against him. And all that, he says, rejoice and be thankful. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands. We went through this in Ephesians. As it is fit in the Lord. It is fit for the Lord for wives submit to their husbands. That's the wife category. Husbands, love your wives and be not bitter against them. There's the husbands. We, we did this through Ephesians. God commands a husband to love his wife. Not sports. Not his job. Children, obey your parents in all things. For this is well pleasing unto the Lord. Now, people say, what if my parents tell me to do something that's against the Bible? Well, let me tell you what the answer is to that. Colossians is written to a bunch of saved men and women it is respectfully that those saved and those saved men and women fathers and mothers are not going to have their children doing anything wrong the character of colossians that we see there 99 percent of them are not going to have their children do wrong now you say what about a child that, that has an unsaved family that's a good question isn't it Yet it says, obey your parents in all things. Children are under the parents. Today they have children, they, they let they they let children have opinions in the opinion pages of the of the newspaper. They they, they go on a television camera and tell how they feel about things. They give rights and give orders to the government and stuff like that. And they don't even know what life is. They are supposed to be subject to their parents. And the father is supposed to be the example of God in the family. The mother is supposed to be the tender example of God in the family. Because he says, fathers, provoke not your children to anger. That's a sin. Verse 8. Least they be discouraged. Fathers are not to discourage their children. They're supposed to raise them up with the admiration of God and Jesus Christ. There is a rule for the family. And when the family suffers, the church suffers. And when the family falls, the church falls. Why are churches the way they are today? Because the family. We are a family of God. We are one unity together. And we cannot, as a church, obey what the Bible says. And then there's the problem. When you, the Bible speaks of a Christian as a body, the wife, the bride of Jesus Christ. It speaks about the members. And when you got a member in your body who's a finger, 
trying to be a knee, it don't work. When you got a rib trying to be a hand, it's, it's, it's not what it's supposed to be. When you got your body trying to overrun the family, it's not what it's, there's an order in the Bible. And Ephesians says it's God, Jesus Christ, the husband, the father, the children, then the job. You break that order, you break the family. That's the troubles today. Servants. That's employees. Obey in all things. Your master according to the flesh. Hey, you want that paycheck? You do what that guy tells you to do. Not with eye service. As men pleasers, but in singleness of heart, fearing God. What's that verse telling you? You don't work when the boss is around. And then when he's not around, you goof off and fool around and steal time. All the time. Singleness of the heart is when you are at that job, you do the job you're being paid for. To the fullest extent. And notice how that goes right in with the family characteristics that we're studying now. And whatsoever you do, whatever you do, whether you're a wife, whether you're a husband, whether you're a child, whether you're a father, whether you are an employee, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. I hate my job. Well, then say, Lord God, you know what? I really hate this job. I hate this employer. But Lord, I love you. Help me. Straighten me. I've been there. And I've had the strength. And I've had the Lord protect me. I've had the Lord give me the fruit of the Spirit. When anything but. Knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance. For ye serve the Lord Christ. That's the reign. So if we are proper in our family and we are proper as parents, we are proper as employees. There is an opportunity for rewards and inher inheritance by what would be an everyday thing for a man that's married or a man that's working. You do it for Jesus Christ and the honor and glory that you get will be rewards. Greater than a paycheck Friday. A paycheck that will be for all eternity. But he that doeth wrong. Wives, husbands, children, fathers, employees. Shall receive for the wrong which he has done. Wood, hay, or stubble. So you can do right and get gold, silver, precious stone. Or you can do wrong. And get wood, hay, or stubble. And our conduct is, all right, you being the old man, that's wood, hay, or stubble. You being a new man, that's gold, precious stone, or silver. There's a reward or there's a loss of reward. And there is no respect of persons. So Paul is not going to walk up to Jesus Christ and, oh, you're the apostle, Paul. Okay, Paul. We'll get we'll take some of these things away because of who you are, and then Stiley Hayward, you know, you're you're a nobody. No, it's not like that, because there is neither Greek or Jew. A Jewish man that is saved is not going to walk up to Jesus Christ and say, "Hey, because I'm Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you know, I get all and all." No, 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 you're not a Jew up here. You're a Christian. We are all those that are saved of the new man. We are all Christians. No free Christians, no bond Christians. No Jewish Christians, no Greek Christians. No idiot Christians, no smart Christians. We are all in Christ as Christians. And what we get judged is for our personal work that we've done after salvation. Now, it won't be classified how many old ladies we walk across the street is what do we do with the word of God. Now, I am doing the same thing that Paul is doing. I am preaching on the streets the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, where Paul will get more than what I get is, unlike my life, Paul has a more, not only preaching on the street, but he has a personal one-on-one -on -one contact with people that I don't usually do. I will if the opportunity comes, but I don't go for that. I mean, I, I, it's something that I don't do regularly. There are Christians out there who who have a public ministry, and they will talk to people one-on-one. -on -one. 
and that is the works of gold, silver, precious stone. The only respect the person here is not the person itself, is what do you do? What are your works? Are they going to be burnt up or are they going to remain? It's going to be rewards or there's going to be lost rewards on your sin and your conduct as a family member or as an employee or employer. And Paul speaks about the employer in Ephesians. Everything we do on this planet, we will be judged. Jesus said every thought will be judged. Everything that you speak, every idle word will be judged. It will be all before the judgment seat of Christ as Christians. And the rewards that, again, over and over, if they go through the fire and remain their gold, silver, precious stones, there's a reward. And if it's wood, hay, or stubble, that's the old man. You get lost. There's a loss. But you're saved, but you'll have a loss. You will not earn anything. And sometimes that wood, hay, or stubble will also take away gold, silver, precious stone. Some sins in the Bible, you know what? They remove, they erase. Because of your conduct. And what the chapter 3 is telling us is telling us the Christian conduct. Before the church, before our families, and before our employers. We're not to be seen. We're all to be doing right. And we ought to be doing it for Jesus Christ. And that will get a reward.